Hey, this is Mark Harrison with the East Bay RC. I've heard uh, a, a number of people asking for some explanations about how PID controllers work, how to adjust their PID values, and it seems that a lot of people get a little bit uh, confused or intimidated because if you, if you if you Google or look at Wikipedia, the you know there, there's there's a lot of math and you know people are not uh, so used to that. Anyways, I thought I'd give uh, my uh, effort uh, for explaining that. I'll probably take a couple of times to get it right, so I'm uh, kind of giving this as a take one. Later, I'll have, uh, I've got a, a simulator that'll actually move uh, a helicopter up and down, but for now I'm just going to kind of uh, talk through it. So anyways, leave me comments below uh, if you think this is useful or if, or if you have problems, and uh, we'll see you know, we'll see, we'll see where this goes. So the first thing is we talk about PIDs and control loops. You'll hear people talk about control loops. The PID, that stands uh, for Proportional Integral Derivative. That's the math part. And the control loop is basically pretty straightforward. You've got a CPU on a quadcopter, and that uh, is doing basically three things. It's reading the sensors, it might be reading a gyro, an accelerometer, you know, some combination of all that. It's uh, calculating corrections, and then it's applying those corrections that it's made, you know, to the, to the aircraft. It could be, you know, spinning up some props and slowing down some other props. You know, it could be, you know, navigating toward a waypoint, etc. You know, one problem is if you look at the thing in real life, there's a lot of things happening all at once, and we're going to simplify this a little bit. Let's just say that we've got one little copter thing, and all it can do is go up and down, and we want it to hit the altitude of 100 feet. And all you have to do this with is a radio, a remote, you can put the power at zero, it's powered down. You can put the power at 100, you know, that's full throttle. And basically, we'll just look and see if the world were that simple, what would you do? Now, the reason you need uh, like, a, like a PID style control loop is because in the real world, things aren't exact. There's lag, there's outside influence. For example, like like if you have a if you have a propeller, you know, a motor and a propeller, and you give full throttle, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a time lag before it uh, you know kicks in. Likewise, if you cut the power back, you know, it, it it takes a little bit of time. Uh, you have outside influences. You might have the wind blowing around. You uh, you know the, you could have different. Uh, like your, your power could fluctuate, you know, when your battery's weaker, you know, you're having to provide more, more throttle to get the same, uh, the same, uh, you know, power. Uh, likewise, you know, things are just kind of inexact. You have a sensor, like you have a GPS sensor might be, you know, moving around. You see that pretty commonly. And even things like, uh, like your gyros or accelerometers, you know, all of those have some kind of error built in you know, in the real world. And so basically we're going to look at how a PID loop kind of takes all those things into account and, you know, delivers a pretty good, you know, approximation of the correct results. Now the history of the PID loop is it started like in the 19 teens and the 1920s. The Navy was looking at what it took to have an autopilot on a ship you know, basically, you point the ship in a certain direction and it keeps it on course. And, uh, you know, they did a lot of work. They, they kind of laid the groundwork, got the uh, mathematical basis all proved out and tried, and it worked really well. And, of course, the Navy brass, you know, didn't want to have anything to do with it because they thought there was nothing, you know, better, you know, than a, than, than a good helmsman, you know, at the wheel. So we're kind of kind of past that, and so... Let's just see what we do. Now the first thing that we see, the P, that stands for proportional, and it's basically an immediate correction. Now let's say we're flying 
and I'm giving you some feedback. So like we're down here, we want to be up here around 100. If you're down at like 8 or 12 feet, I'm going to say you've got a lot of ground to make up. Go ahead and give it a lot of power. And you would. Now, if you were here, so like if you were at 95 feet or so, I would tell you you're almost there. Give it just a nudge to get, you know, to get up to your uh, altitude, your target altitude of 100. Likewise, if you were a little bit above, I would tell you back off just a little bit. If you were, you know, way the heck up here, I'd tell you, you better back off a lot because you're fixing to fly away and you need to get down to get down to your target altitude. So that is basically how the proportional part of the loop works. As you're going through, you get an error. You may be, you know, 10 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet off and you make a correction proportional to that. If you're 10 feet off, you need to give a correction that's going to be multiplied by 10. If you're zero, you don't need to do anything. So your, you know, your, your current value stays the same. Now, that works pretty well and actually provides the most uh, influence in the control loop. And that should be obvious. You're down here, I tell you give it a lot of power. You're up here, I tell you give it a little bit of power, you know, extra power. You're right at your spot and I tell you that's perfect. Hold right where you're at. Now one problem that you can have is suppose we've got some wind blowing down and what's going to happen is we're going to be coming up here and I'm going to be giving you, you know, I'm going to say give, give it a lot of power, give it a lot of power. Now here, say like we're at like 93 and I'm going to be telling you your correction is just a little bit. And so you give enough correction but this wind is still blowing you down. You're, you're, you're trying to get to 100 but you get uh, what they call a steady state error. You're like five feet off the mark but the P part of the PID loop is not giving you any power. So what we do is we apply an integral correction. And basically what we do is each time we go through the loop, we take whatever the error value is and we add that and we continue adding that. So say for example, like we're good on the P part, but we're going to loop through. Say like we're right here, we're going to say we're six off, add six by your I term. You multiply by your I term. Next time through the loop, we're still at six, so now the total error term is 12, then 18, etc. And then we will gradually kind of start pushing through there, and we will hit zero. And at zero, your proportional correction is going to be none because it's going to say you're at the right altitude. You might have a little bit of overcorrection. So you might be like at 105, 104, something like that. And so what's going to happen is you're going to start subtracting. You see the error is negative now. So say like we had the integral error that was like, like 50 then like through this loop, it's going to be minus, it'll be uh, 46, then it'll be uh, 42, maybe we'll drop down a foot by then, it'll be 39, and it'll just keep getting better until we're at zero, and then the correction of the you know, you know, of the built-up error goes to zero. Now sometimes this gets, uh, you know, there, there's a bunch of coding tricks for example, like if you're at your target attitude, uh, altitude so that your error is zero, a lot of times they'll just zero out the uh, error for your, for, for your uh, 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 integral correction so that you don't overshoot. Now finally, and this is a little bit less important, apparently by the physics of quadcopters, the internet uh, confidently states that this is the least important value.
but we'll, but we'll but we'll cover it just to see what it is. You know, let's make the wind go away here. Let's see, no more wind. And this is also really intuitive. If we're coming really fast into our target altitude, we're probably going to overshoot because if we're shooting up here, you know, with a with like with a hundred percent throttle, and you hit your altitude of a hundred, and I say stop. Even if you back off, you're probably going to bounce up above, and likewise, you might bounce down below, and you might get some overshoot, possibly some oscillation as you, you know, continue like to overcorrect and undercorrect. So what the derivative does, you know, if you've taken calculus, you'll re recall derivatives, all the rate of change problems, is it provides a way of correcting or dampening uh, too much motion. If you're coming in really, really fast here, I might tell you you're you're really hot, kind of slow it down a little bit so that when you get close, it's going to be a small correction. Likewise, if you're up here and I tell you to cut the power and you're dropping like a stone, you know, you might want to say, let's put a little bit more power in so that as we get closer, we are changing a little bit uh, uh, more slowly. So that's not the most important one, and there's a lot of implementations of PID loops, which are actually PI loops without a derivative at all. So anyways, we've got uh, uh, some more things that I'm working on. I'm, I'm, I'm actually working on plugging this into a physics engine simulator so that you'll be able to have like, like PID values over here and you'll be able to see the calculation as it's going and uh, you know, it'll be like this awesome video game that you'll actually be trying to balance balance this box copter or whatever it is you know, right at a hundred feet based on nothing but um, you know, your, your PID values and have it do it in conjunction like when you've got wind blowing down. But for now, just kind of remember that uh, you know the, the key uh, takeaway points are is that you've got a loop. You're reading the sensors, you're calculating the corrections, and then you're applying the corrections. You know, speeding motors up, slowing motors down. You have the proportional, which says if you're off by a lot, you better change. You make a correction by a lot. If you're off by a little. Just make a correction, you know, that's a proportional by a little. You have the integral steady state correction. It says if you're there but you're not quite there and it doesn't look like you're making progress, just kind of nudge it up. And the longer you're not making progress, you know, the more correction you should make. And finally, you have the derivative that if you're blasting in hot, you should back off your correction a little bit. If you're coming in nice and slow, you don't need to do a lot of correction on the speed. So anyways, there's kind of the first, uh, the first cut of this, and uh, I'll work on this code a little bit more, but uh, leave some comments and let me know what you think.